Hey guys, it's me, Kim. So let's talk about this amazing thing that's happening in Arizona right now. So look, I don't have a whole lot to say about the Gosars. All I can do is commend them. Uh, if you're not familiar with this story, this is six siblings from a family that is actively campaigning against their brother, Dr. Paul Gosar. He's a four-time incumbent for a congressional seat in Arizona. Um, Paul Gosar is uh, batshit crazy. He's very pro-Trump. He's pro-build that wall. He's a birther. His siblings describe him as racist. In his official capacity as a congressperson, he peddles these Infowars conspiracy theories. Here is a video of him talking to Vice. Antifa's in the news because of a, a white supremacist rally in Charlottesville. Well, isn't that interesting? That maybe that was created by the left. You yeah, know, why because, do you say that? Because let's look at the person that actually started the, the rally. It's come to our attention that this is a person from Occupy Wall Street that was an Obama sympathizer. So wait a minute. Be careful on what you, where you start taking these people to. And look at the background. George Soros is one of those people that actually helps, you know, back these individuals. Who is he? I think he's from Hungary. I think he was Jewish, and I think he turned in his own people to the Nazis. We better be very careful of where we go with those. Do you think George Soros funded the neo-Nazis who marched in Charlottesville? Wouldn't it be interesting to find out? Right. So just to quickly debunk that stuff, the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville from August of 2017 was organized by a man named Jason Kessler. Jason Kessler is very proud to talk about how he organized this rally. He is a UVA grad, a uh, Nazi sympathizer. Uh, George Soros, on the other hand, is not a Nazi sympathizer. He was 13 when the Nazis occupied Hungary, where he was born. And then he fled to England when he was 16. And now he's a huge progressive philanthropist, right? These are lies, easily verifiable lies from someone elected to Congress. And just as a reminder, uh, a woman died in Charlottesville. So to be fair, Paul Gosar really sucks. And after Gosar came out with these lies about Charlottesville, seven of his siblings signed a letter denouncing him in a local Arizona newspaper. So when we understand the background of this terrible human, you completely understand why six of the nine Gosar siblings agreed to appear on camera in a political ad for their brother's adversary. This man has to be stopped. So the ads are so good. Let's let's just watch them. None of this is pleasant for any of us. It's horrible to have to do this. To speak up against my brother, it brings sadness to me. This isn't just about Paul. This is about their family. I think my brother has traded a lot of the values we had at, the, at our kitchen table. I couldn't be quiet any longer, nor should any of us be. We got to stand up for our good name. This is not who we are. It's intervention time. And intervention time means that you go to vote, and you go to vote Paul out. My name is Tim Gosar. My name is Jennifer Gosar. Gaston Gosar. Joan Gosar. Grace Gosar. David Gosar. Paul Gosar is my brother. My brother. My brother. And I endorse Dr. Brill. Dr. Brill. Dr. Brill. And I wholeheartedly endorse Dr. David Brill for Congress. I'm Dr. David Brill, and I approve this message. Paul Gosar, the congressman, isn't doing anything to help rural America. Paul's absolutely not working for his district. If they care about health care, they care about their children's health care, they would hold him to account. If they care about jobs, they would hold him to account. If he actually cared about people in rural Arizona, I bet he'd be fighting for Social Security, for better access to health care. I, I bet he would be researching what is the most insightful water policy to help the environment of Arizona sustain itself and be successful. And he's not listening to you, and he doesn't have your interests at heart. 
My name is Tim Gosar. David Gosar. Grace Gosar. Joan Gosar. Gaston Gosar. Jennifer Gosar. Paul Gosar is my brother. My brother. And I endorse Dr. Brill. Dr. Brill wholeheartedly endorse Dr. David Brill for Congress. I'm Dr. David Brill, and I approve this message. All I can honestly think about is the fact that this man must be a real scumbag. It can't just be about political differences. He just, he's got to be awful, awful human being. Imagine the type of terrible you have to be for your siblings to say, no, I'm not just going to write a letter. I'm not just going to send out some tweets. I am going to appear in an ad that's going to be broadcast in my home state. So all of this started when the Brill campaign saw one of the brothers tweeting out against Paul Gosar. And this is a little bit from the New York Times. It says, quote, The congressman's brother David caught the eye of Dr. Brill's campaign through his criticism of Mr. Gosar on Twitter. David Gosar said he keeps the Twitter account solely to publicly admonish his brother, alternately referring to him as Weeze or Weasel. <laughs> Amazing. It's so good. The brother also told the Times, quote, I'm just hoping either in this election cycle or next, the people get the idea that he's just not fit for that office and he needs to be removed. <laughs> Man, ugh. So political scientists talk about the increasing polarization of the electorate a lot. Polarization is the division between the ideological viewpoints on both sides of the aisle. Those have deepened considerably, meaning the far left is now further away from the far right than 20, 30 years ago. And the commitment to those political ideologies is much more fierce. So I am an admitted ideologue since I was a kid, and I'm not well versed enough on the consequences of polarization to really give an assessment of if that's a good or bad thing. But all of this stuff with Paul Gosar and his family really seems like a great illustration of what polarization looks like. This these are the consequences. These are the consequences of that. So, of course, Paul Gosar responded on Twitter. He wrote, Not one of my siblings lives in Arizona, and my opponent's policies are out of sync with what Arizona wants and the country needs. I will not be deterred from fighting for our conservative values regardless of these attacks. My siblings who chose to film ads against me are all liberal Democrats who hate President Trump. These disgruntled Hillary supporters are related by blood to me, but like leftists everywhere, they put political ideology before family. Stalin would be proud. You can't pick your family. We all have crazy aunts and relatives, etc. And my family is no different. I hope they find peace in their hearts and let go all the hate. To the six angry Democrat Gosars, see you at mom and dad's house. Honestly, that's a pretty good public statement from Paul Gosar. Their mom is still alive. She's 85 and she's not happy about all this. She told the New York Times, quote, I share the same philosophy and policies that Paul does. He's done a hell of a job for Arizona and they love him. The stuff she's saying about they love him is not too far off the mark. He's very popular and he's not in any trouble in this race. This is not a swing district. He represents a district Trump won by 39.4 points in 2016. That means it's safe. That makes these ads that feature his siblings even better for me. They know that Brill isn't going to win. They're not swinging this thing. They want to make it known <laughs> for perpetuity, that they do not fuck with their brother. That is some next-level virtue signaling. And also, we just got to talk about the brilliance of the ads themselves. Not only is it incredible that they have six of these siblings with their professional titles, they're beautifully shot. 
The backgrounds are beautiful. These beautiful landscapes behind them. The editing is so effective. Whoever conceived of these ads deserves a raise. Everybody hire them. They are so, so good. So to wrap this up, Shout out to the Gosar siblings doing what they had to do. Shout out to anyone else who was committed to shaming their crazy, bigoted relatives. I don't think that shaming changes people's minds. We actually have pretty good evidence that that is not true. But it does communicate that your public stances have consequences. And that is also an important part of building a healthy civil society. If you come out being a bigot, your family is going to tell the world that they are ashamed to be related to you. <laughs> so hopefully that keeps some bigots in the closet. I'm all for it. Okay, guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening slash watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to help us continue this work, important work might I say? Become a patron on Patreon. There's exclusive content, merch, tickets to events. Love y'all. Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Kim Possible. Uh, email me. I don't respond to comments for real anymore, but email me, DM me, message me. Love y'all. Gotta go. Bye.